Wednesday afternoon, Billy wanted to pull my Nova out of the shop to bring his car in to do some service work on it to get it ready to go racing this weekend. So June Pup and I backed my car out, let it warm up in the driveway for a few minutes, and then took it around the block to make turbo noises. While we were out cruising around the block, Billy pulled his car in the shop and put it up on the lift. It needs an oil change, and it needs a nut and bolt inspection underneath the chassis just to make sure everything is good to go for another weekend's worth of racing. Thankfully, the used oil and the oil filter look good. While Billy's in the shop working on his Nova, Jeremy's out in the driveway stripping parts and pieces off his blown up V6 to get cleaned up and get ready to assemble on his new long block that he got from the junkyard. He was making pretty good progress on it, and he was just about to head back up to the farm to work on his truck when someone pulled in the driveway requesting his assistance. It seems that Mr. Dennis the Menace has a broken lawnmower and needs Jeremy's help. Recently, Denny's original lawnmower broke down, so he replaced it with a Husqvarna Zero Turn, which is now also broke down. I got me so bad, I can't tell you about it. What's the matter, Denny? Well, I bought me a lawnmower, a Husqvarna Zero Turn. Yeah? $1,500. $1,500. And I said, what's going on with this uh, sparking flying underneath the uh, deck? Yeah. He goes, you know, I'm not really sure. I said, well, you know what, let's take 100 off of it. He said, okay. <laughs> so it was an idler pulley for $26. So you so, bought you a sparky lawnmower. Yes, I did. Now it's leaking gas. Now, I'm glad I didn't do both at the same time. Right. That would have been a disaster. It did okay for about three weeks. So you've come to hire my brother. I'm, I'm gonna pay him in advance. Uncle Buckwheat. Uncle Bucko, tell me why my Huskin Barna is leaking gas. Because it just, uh, that's just not the way it should work. So while Jeremy heads to Denny's house to go look at his Husqvarna Zero Turn, me and Billy run into Jegs to pick up some parts to try and get things ready to put my Malibu back together once we put the engine together up at Bob's this coming week. I picked up some gaskets for the Malibu and a boost gauge for my Nova, and we headed back to the shop. Meanwhile, my brother has just finished up putting Denny's lawnmower back together, and Denny's about to take it out and test run it for the first time. Denny is very particular about taking care of his yard, and this pesky fuel leak has the potential to kill the grass wherever Denny drives it. Thankfully, the problem was just a stuck float in the carburetor. So I adjusted the float, put it back together, cleaned it up, he's off and mowing. Gonna be a happy, grumpy old man. <laughs> so that brings us to Friday. Now, Jeremy plans on working on his little S10 today, and I plan on going up to see Uncle Bob. I want to check in on him and see how he's doing with the Malibu's engine, and I also want to talk to him about this plan that Jimmy Dale's come up with to have someone bring his engine from Texas all the way to Ohio to have Bob take a look at it. Now, Bob's pretty busy up there at the shop, both in the service department and in the machine shop. Nick's trying to get as much of the service work pushed out the door as he can, and Bob's trying to get caught up on projects in the machine shop. Although he's making forward progress, sometimes it feels like one step forward and two steps back, especially when Bob never gets time to work on his own car. While Bob was shoving this 572 into the dyno room to make some horsepower, my brother's down at Mark's talking about horsepower and racking up my parts bill. Look at all them horse pressures. Yeah, I see that. It had horse pressures. It, galore. Oh boy. The rod twisted. And yeah, back. it twisted it sideways and everything. In my defense, the block is not harmed. The block is it not It could harmed. be rebuilt if you chose to. Yep, you probably could. Judging by the stack of receipts I'm seeing, I would have been better off just to order a brand new long block for him. Bob, you're not gonna believe this. My brother blew up that S10 down there on the round track in Nashville. Yes, sir. And I told him since he was filming it and I used it on the channel, I would take care of the new engine and whatever sensors and parts he needed to put it back in the truck so it would be dependable. You should see the boxes of shit that he's bought down there at Mark's. Timing chain set, timing cover, I mean, my God, everything. Head gaskets. Probably a camshaft if I dug deep enough in the receipts. You got any of my race truck parts? Yeah, I, I do. I need my you high performance. More, you mean your, your more high performance 4.3? Yes. Boxes of shame. It's it's it, it's not boxes of shame. Now look at that. 
What is that? That's that's a lightweight racing timing see, cover. Oh, this is lighter. Than, lightweight. Look at that. Rob would is, love that. Yeah, Look, it weighs nothing. Yeah, yeah Tony would like that. That's better than Yeah, paint. Tony Baloney would be yeah, all over would that, that shit. Now, I know you were wanting a double roller timing. If you could split that in half and put a double roller on there, I, I'd like to see that. You know, weren't happy with the gaskets I got you, so they had to find metal. Ones yeah, to get plastic it. timing cover, okay. Yeah. Plastic intake gaskets, not okay. Oh, not good. You better get this thing put together. I am assembling. I've been waiting on you. Oh, well, it's all stuff here. I'm not holding you up anymore. So it's about time. To, I'm yeah. trying to get my paint to flowing yeah. before yeah. Kenny Powers gets here and robs a can from me. Now that he's done polluting the ocean, I think I seen a great white shark the other day in a news flick floating upside down. Oh, Kenny's clogs in the ocean and its bellies up for the great white. Don't be on the endangered species. Bob, I gotta get back to my shop. All hell's breaking loose down there and I gotta get to the bottom of this. Oh yeah? Now initially, Jeremy told me he found a low mileage 4.3 in the junkyard for $375. So I figured a new water pump, a new starter, and some sensors and we'd be in there. However, Jeremy's turned this into a restoration project. You know, when I told you to go down to Mark's and get whatever you needed, I didn't realize it was going this far. What do you mean? What do you mean? I said a starter and sensors, you know, whatever. I might as well just gone ahead and ordered a whole new long block. Well, that's what I got. By the time I got home from Jeremy's house, I had another surprise. So, I came home today, right? Yeah, I came home today and there's a silver Escape and a newborn baby. You can't forget Tom's motor. How do I have an Escape, two Texans, and a newborn baby in my driveway? That's, that's just how we do it in Texas. <laughs> that's how we so, this, this guy, he says his name is Roscoe. He won't give me his fed name. Dropped off this. You ever seen that before? Yeah. That's yeah, Jimmy Dale's engine. I gotta take it to Uncle Bob. Dude, she drove, they drove all the way here from Texas, 15 hours nonstop. What in the heck? Look at all them chickens. I should let Scrap out. No. <laughs> so Roscoe here loaded up his wife and a newborn baby in a Ford Escape, drove to Jimmy Dale's, loaded up his 434, put it in the back of the car and drove 15 hours one way to get this engine up here. Vicky and I figured the least we could do is take him out to dinner. Anyway, by Friday night, Jeremy was just about finished with his engine. He had managed to get it painted and had the intake manifold on and was almost ready to put it down in the truck. I just hope after all this work and parts and effort, it runs as good as it looks. So that brings us to Saturday morning. It's race day and me, Vicky, the dogs and the kids are headed to Tad and Jim's Dragway of Magnolia for No Prep Mania 7.0. Tommy loaded the Falcon up on the open trailer behind the Suburban, and Billy's Nova is in the big trailer behind his Cummins. The kids will all be riding up together in Billy's truck, and me and Vicky will be hauling the dogs and all the merch in the back of the Suburban. Now, we just had a private test session up at Magnolia about a week or so ago, right before we went to War in the Woods. However, Usually for no prep mania, they scrape the track and power wash it. So typically first round can be pretty difficult, but generally by second round, the track comes around pretty decent. However, on this particular trip up to Magnolia, we had no idea just how tough this track surface would be for this event. There were quite a few fresh patches made to the track that will add another level of difficulty to an already difficult surface. All things considered, I figure the Falcon will probably do a little bit better tonight than the Nova due to the fact that it doesn't make as much power, it's on newer tires, it has a higher center of gravity, and it has a shorter wheelbase. Anyway, after the driver's meeting, everybody went up to the starting line for first round where we found out there was more than racing planned here tonight. For a minute there, I was worried she wasn't going to say yes. But anyway, after that was over, it was time to get down to business. 
The first pair went down the track, and the track definitely seemed sketchier than normal. There were quite a few upsets first round, but both the boys managed to make it through without too much trouble. However, the Nova definitely struggled. They had a packed house there Saturday night, and the Falcon made it down late in the rounds. Go ahead and jump over to Street Racing Channel on YouTube for all the round-by-round -round action. By Monday morning, it was time to get back to work. Today's the day we're gonna load up Jimmy Dale's small block and run it back up to the machine shop so we can pull it apart, assess the damage, and try and figure out what caused it. Once I had the engine loaded up in the back of the 64, I pulled the truck out, brought my Nova back in the shop, and then I wanted to get the Falcon unloaded off the open trailer and get the trailer disconnected from Vicky's Suburban so that she can run errands with it while I'm using her truck today to take the engine up to Bob's. The dogs and I were just getting ready to hook the John Deere to the trailer to move it back to its parking spot when Kenny Power showed up for his first day back to work after his vacation in Florida. Well, 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 if it isn't sunshine and flowers, Mr. Kenny Powers. It's a manatee killer. <laughs> How was your vacation? Great. Did you enjoy your time? Very hot. Basking in the sun? Killing dolphins and great white sharks? Is that what it was? Swimming with dolphins and manatees. Oh. Belly with the belly, yeah. I left Kenny and Jeremy quite a list of things to do, and then I hit the road in the 64 headed north up to Bob's with Jimmy Dale's small block. It was raining real lightly this morning, but not enough to where I needed to cover the engine or worry about it getting wet. I backed the 64 right in the shop, and Nick and LT helped me get it unloaded, get it on the engine stand, and then we started tearing it apart to assess the damage. Based on what I saw from the spark plugs when Jimmy pulled them out at the track, the engine definitely has a problem on the passenger side, and it's most likely a broken piston. Bob pulled the driver's side cylinder head off first, and at first glance, everything looked fine, but it's the passenger side I'm most concerned with. Based on the sounds that I heard the engine making when we were at the track, I'm sure there's a piston broke, but the question is whether the cylinder head and the cylinder wall has survived. With the passenger side cylinder head removed, we found the top ring land broken on the number two cylinder piston. The question now is what caused it? When I watched Jimmy's car leave the starting line at War in the Woods, the nitrous tune-up definitely looked rich and it sounded like it had plenty of timing pulled out of it. To me, the pass looked like it was fairly fast. It definitely had a fast 60 and 330 foot time. But despite the fact that the tune-up looked rich and retarded, we've got one broken piston. Thankfully, the cylinder wall and the cylinder head are gonna survive. But regardless, we need to go ahead and take the rest of this engine apart and inspect the bottom end and dig deeper for clues to see what caused this. LT carefully removed the oil pan and then I went ahead and pulled all the connecting rods and pistons out of the block and inspected all the rod and the main bearings. Every single bearing in this engine looked like it had never been used. However, the rings on every piston were damaged with the worst ones being one, two, seven, and eight. The nitrous tune-up definitely doesn't look lean, but let's take a closer look. Initially, Jimmy's Mustang leaves clean, and then about 10 feet out, you start to see the nitrous come in. The black smoke out the exhaust indicates that the tune-up is excessively rich, but if you watch very carefully, at about 400 feet, the smoke clears up, and then just a few frames of the video later, you see a little spark come out the passenger side bank of cylinders, which is most likely molten aluminum from the piston and or spark plug tips being burnt off. All right, guys, welcome back to the shop. Uh, kind of on purpose, I have held off a little bit of information as to what's going on with Jimmy's Mustang. Part of it is on purpose uh, because I rather enjoy watching people make stupid comments. Well, sometimes I enjoy it. Other times, not so much. Uh, listen, before I tell you what happened, let me, let me just explain to you something. Uh, the most common idiotic 
comment that I see on a regular basis is from guys that are LS cheerleaders that scream, get rid of the small block. You need an LS, you need this and you need that. I'll tell you what happened in just a second. But before I tell you what happened, let me explain to you something. LS pistons, okay, are made out of the same material that they make small block Chevy pistons out of, right? LS head gaskets are made out of the same material they make small block Chevy head gaskets out of. LS connecting rods are made out of the same material that small block Chevy rods are made out of. Huh. You ever thought of that? Look, it wouldn't have mattered whether it was an LS of small block Ford, a small block Chevy, a big block Chevy, a 2JZ. It doesn't matter what engine was in that car. Jesus Christ himself could have come down from the heavens and machined the block, turned the crank, balanced the rotating assembly, gapped the rings, assembled the engine, put it in the car, blessed it with holy water, and it wouldn't have made a damn bit of difference. It could have been Steve Morris. It could have been Bob. It could have been Mike Henson. It could have been anybody. It wouldn't have made any difference. Because the reason this happened had nothing to do with any of that. What happened was when Jimmy was here, okay, he did away with his standalone fuel system and he plumbed the nitrous system with a brand new fuel log and tied everything in to run off one pump in the back of the car, which is fine. There's nothing wrong with that. There's nothing wrong with the fuel system. There's nothing wrong with the nitrous kit. There's nothing wrong with any of it. What happened was not completely revealed to us until after Jimmy put another engine in the car. Jimmy found a really good deal on an 18 degree small block Chevy with a fogger, right? Found a really good deal on it, complete carburetor to oil pan. Even came with a converter, right? So Jimmy buys this engine, he puts it in the car, they fire it up, it's sitting there running. Sounds great. And then all of a sudden, for no reason, it dies. And Jimmy's like, what the heck's going on here? Well, they get to looking around and the fuel pump quit. Huh. Well, that's weird. It always worked fine before. Hmm. Jimmy said it's always been a little loud. But it seems like it's been getting louder. What happened when Jimmy's engine got burned up? <clears throat> was that the fuel pump has bearings that hold the armature and one of the bearings had gone bad. And when the pump would heat up and expand, the bearing would seize on the shaft and lock up the fuel pump and it couldn't keep up idling after it got warm. So they take the fuel pump apart and they find this problem and it becomes obvious if you watch the video of him going down the track, the likely culprit, <laughs> okay? Typically on a small block Chevy, the four center cylinders are always the hottest because they're Siamese exhaust. But in Jimmy's case, the four corners all had a nipped plug and number two hurt the piston. Now think about that. The carburetor bowls still had gasoline in them. So the car is going down the track and it loses fuel pressure. The engine doesn't care until it runs out of fuel in the carburetor. Doesn't make any difference. But the nitrous kit, once it loses fuel pressure, it's lights out. So the car was basically running on the carburetor for the last 300 feet. And that's the only fuel it was getting was just through the carburetor. The carburetor was doing its part as best it could, but the nitrous kit went completely lean. Now, I don't care, I'll say this again, I don't care if it was a $100,000 LS motor, a $100,000 big block Chevy, big block Ford, small block Ford, 
it doesn't make any difference. If you're spraying 400, 400 horse shot of nitrous, and you turn the fuel off on that thing at 300 feet, 400 feet, <laughs> I guarantee you not one of them's coming back for the next round. I don't care who built it. I don't care who machined it. I don't care whose pistons are in it. I don't care about any of it. In fact, to be quite honest, the, probably the only reason that that engine uh, made it back to its pit spot after what had happened was the fact that it was so rich and the ignition timing was retarded so bad to begin with. I mean, if you watch that video, the car definitely wasn't tuned for max power. It was overly rich, overly retarded on a big jet. It was the first time he'd ever made a pass on that big jet with that engine. Was it the best thing to do? No, he probably should have gone and tested it and and we can play what ifs forever. But the fact of the matter is, it wouldn't have made any difference. It's not Jimmy's fault. It's not Raska's fault. It's not Nitrous Express's fault. It's not Bob's fault. It's not my fault. It's nobody's fault. It's a racing related incident. And it happens all the time. Case in point. Case in point. Look what happened to Cletus McFarlane, okay, on this drag and drive deal that he's doing. He was at Great Lakes Dragway, made one really good pass, 680 at 212 mile an hour, I think it was. He's leaning on that thing, right? He makes a nice clean hit, gets to the end of the track, car won't start. Uh, I don't, I'll be honest, this is the first Cletus McFarlane video I've ever watched because Billy sent it to me and told me to watch this. And I thought it was a really good video, by the way. Uh, but <clears throat> he has trouble, right? Cletus McFarlane has enough money to have the best of the best of the best built by the best of the best three and four times over. Steve Morris builds his engine, right? Do you guys think Steve Morris is a bad engine builder? <laughs> Definitely not. But Cletus goes and makes his pass. He has trouble. Car won't start. They tow it back to the pits. It's a throttle position sensor or something. I don't know. Um, they get the car to fire back up, and he goes back up to make another hit and blows the tires off, and the engine loses oil pressure. It's almost the exact same engine that's in Billy's Nova. And Billy's Nova's had plenty of trouble with oil pressure. None of it was Bob's fault. None of it's anything. It's nobody's fault. It's just a matter of a new combination that we're working on that's wet sump with an aluminum block. It, we had some problems with it. And it stemmed from the original engine builder, by the way. Whatever, I'm not going down that rabbit hole. But my point is, guys, if you're leaning on shit you're going to hurt it. Eventually, you're going to hurt it. Uh, if you're learning, if you're not the best tuner, if you're not the most prepared, uh, you're, you're bound to probably hurt something if you lean on it. If you go out with Pumpy 85 and you start throwing 350 horse to a, a small block Chevy that's 14 to 1 compression, like I did, you run the risk of detonation and hurting a piston, which I did. It's totally my fault. hundred percent. No question. I knew better. I have known better for a long time. It's like playing Russian roulette. Somebody called me out for a grudge race. I accepted. I didn't really have time to go get, um, ignite red that week, whatever. I thought, you know what? I'll pull an extra two degrees timing out of each kit and I, I should be okay. I wasn't, although I thought I got away with it, right? I drove the car for two weeks. Didn't know there was anything wrong with it. Jimmy went 1050s three times in a row at trails on motor. And we didn't know that there was a problem until we got it back to the house and it was puffing out the breathers. Still ran on eight cylinders. It was going 1050s. <laughs> Had a hurt piston from where I tore it up, spraying it. So <clears throat> in closing, I guess what I just want to say tonight, guys, is do everybody a favor in the comments. If you've got just stupid uh, negative things to say, just keep it to yourself because it really upsets uh, the people who are trying to help us. 
you know, Bob is the last person to touch everything before it goes out the door. He has no control over manufacturing processes. Uh, he has no control over what we do to the engine after it leaves his shop. Obviously, we're beating on it and just tearing the hell out of stuff. I mean, we're just laying on it. Uh, and I see a lot of people comment, well, the Falcon, well, the Falcon. Listen, the Falcon is a stock block, six liter block with stock, uh, what is it? They call them four bolt heads. The Falcon has two tiny little turbos and it is maxed out. What it can possibly make without hurting itself. We can turn it up as far as we can turn it up and it's designed to run and make that much power and it'll never hurt itself. I think the only time it actually got close to hurting itself is when the kids leaned on it uh, 38, 39 pounds of boost and it lifted a head, which is pretty typical on a four bolt block LS engine, about 38 pounds on methanol. They'll lift a head, drink their own antifreeze and that's the end of it. Luckily ours, just weeped antifreeze out the outside of the block and it didn't drink itself to death. But the small block in the S10 never had any safety features whatsoever. Uh, and since we put it on fuel injection, which everybody said, oh, fuel injection, you gotta have fuel injection. Well, yeah, fuel injection's nice, right? You got a lot of data there that you can collect. But have you seen that truck run worth a shit since we put it on fuel injection? Fuel injection doesn't make anything run any better than a well-tuned carburetor, okay? It gives you more data, but the problems with that S10 engine have nothing to do with Bob, have nothing to do with the tune-up, nothing to do with Billy. There's been a lot of things that went wrong with that deal. None of it was our fault. There's just been freak things that happen, and I'm not going to get into it here tonight, but it had nothing to do with Bob doing anything wrong. So before you guys pass judgment on people who are trying to help and trying to do a good job, keep in mind, there's a lot of things that you don't know. Everybody has problems. Steve Morris has problems. Cletus McFarlane has problems. Chief and Jackie have problems. We have problems. And every single race team out there that we have raced with for the last three or four months have all been through a machine shop. They've all dropped a valve. They've all had some kind of a problem. They fix them and they keep on going. It's just not half a million people know about it, right? And a lot of them won't tell you that they blew their shit up. They fix it real quick and put it back in the car and don't say anything because they don't want anybody to know they tore their shit up. Good night, everybody.